Hello everyone and welcome to our 1.5 notes on measuring angles. So let's look at a few terms and definitions to get started. An angle is going to be formed by two line segments or rays that share the same endpoint. And so you can see right here we've got R to S is one ray in this angle. R to T is another ray and they share that same endpoint R. So that is going to be the vertex of the angle. When referring to the measure of an angle, we're going to use the lowercase m. So if you ever see like the measure of angle A or the measure of angle 1, that's talking about the degree that is assigned to that angle. And so there's going to be a few different ways to name this angle in our picture. Um, we're going to look at the, we have exterior space and then we have interior space in this angle. And that will become important in a second. Um, so let's look at the four different ways to name this angle. Um, the lazy way to name it is just by naming it by its vertex. So we could call this angle angle R. We can also, um, sometimes they'll put a number, not a degree symbol, but just a number on the inside of that angle. So another way to name that angle is going to be angle 1. Um, when you have a picture, a diagram that has more than one angle in it, you're going to want to use three letters. And so what you're going to do is you're going to put the vertex in the middle. So it's going to be angle something r something and then angle something r something where the r is the vertex that's going to be in the middle so r is the vertex and you're going to grab a letter from each ray so s is on that ray so s r t and notice that when you trace it that forms the angle s r t would be that angle but you can also play the uno reverse card and go t r s would also be that same angle so you grab a letter from each um, ray and you put the vertex in the middle. So angle SRT traces it and angle TRS traces it. You can also call it angle R, which is the vertex, and angle 1, which is the number on the inside. So what is the vertex? The vertex is going to be that common endpoint of those two rays. So in my picture, that would be this part right here. Angle R would be my vertex. And the way that you would name that is you would just call it angle R. Um, that is the vertex of those two rays. All right, so what are adjacent angles? Adjacent is a term that means next to. So I like to think of that like neighbors. I have neighbors on the side of my street to the left of my house and to the right of my house. Adjacent means that you are next to each other. So what are adjacent angles? Adjacent angles are going to be two angles, so there has to be two of them two angles with a common vertex and a common side, but no common interior points. So if we look at angle one, angle one is made up of this orange ray and this pink ray. Angle two is made up of that orange ray and this blue ray. They share a common side. That orange part, I think of it like the property line between you and your neighbor's house. There's a common side. Ray BC is the common side between these two angles, and they share no common interior points, meaning that anything that is on the interior of angle 2 is not also going to be on the interior of angle 1. Okay, so it's like houses, so I like to draw a little house in each one. This angle is next door neighbors to this angle. They share a property line, and they both are on the same side of the street, sharing the same vertex at vertex B. And so here's how you would name those angles. We have angle DBC. You could also call that angle CBD. That angle is going to be adjacent to angle CBA. You could also call that angle ABC. So where angle one and angle two are adjacent, another way to name is, is angle DBC and angle CBA. Those are adjacent, those are neighbors. Those are next door to each other. Let me give you an example of non-adjacent angles. So non-adjacent, non-adjacent, would be like this if I had a bunch of angles coming out of here. I had angle one and angle three. Those are not adjacent. Those might be on the same side of the street. They share a vertex, but those don't share a common ray. So like that one and that one, those don't share a common ray. Um, we could have an example of adjacent angles. So that's non-adjacent. Let me go back. That's non-adjacent. Let me give you an example of an adjacent set of angles that a lot of people don't think are adjacent upon first glance. You have a set of adjacent angles where maybe you have somebody that has bought two sets of lots. Like they bought angle um, one, two, three. They bought lot one and lot two and built a really big house on it. That house would still be adjacent 
to house on the one on lot three. So this angle, this whole thing would be adjacent to this piece. Okay. They share a common vertex and they share a common side. So here's the property line. That one house just bought two lots. So that is an example of adjacent. So we'll see more of those as we go. All right. You also cannot be adjacent if you don't share a vertex. Let's go now back to non-adjacent. Um, so you could have something that might look adjacent. But if you've got one angle, angle one, coming out of this vertex, and angle two is coming out of this vertex, these still technically share a property line. These share a side array, but they don't share a vertex. So those are non-adjacent. We would have to have that same vertex. Okay. All right. So answer each question using the angles below. So we've got this diagram. Name the vertex of the angle. So what's my vertex? That's going to be the point that's coming out of each ray. So here are my rays. I have ray KJ and ray KL. That forms this angle. So what is that vertex going to be? That's going to be angle K. Name the sides of the angle. We know that the sides of the angle are going to be made up of the rays. So that'll be K through L and K through J. All right, name four ways to name the angle. We can name it by its vertex. We can name it by the number that's inside of it. Um, it's not a degree symbol, it's just the number. And then we can name it by um, three letters using K in the middle with a point from each ray around it. So LKJ, JKL would also work. So leave the K in the middle for the vertex, leave the K in the middle, and then just put the surrounding um, letters, one from each ray. All right, name all the angles in the image above. So this one's a little bit more complicated. What is my, um, we have a bunch of different angles going on. So I'm gonna um, put some little marks on them and put a star in the little one. I'm gonna put a heart on the bigger one. And then we have the angle that goes over all of them, which I'm going to put a smiley face on. So name all of those angles. So let's start with our star angle. To name that angle, we have angle, there, we don't wanna just call it angle L because there's multiple angles. We have three different angles coming out of angle L, the heart, the star, and the smiley face. So we wanna name those with all three letters. So angle JKL would be my star angle, JKL. Um, Oh, not JKL, I'm sorry guys. JLM, JLM, I'm reading it backwards. JLM, so starting at J, going to L, and then coming out at M. The same way to name that would be MLJ, which is what I was trying to do, I think, in my head. So that's the, the notice the vertex is at L, so that's my star angle. What's my heart angle? My heart angle, again, has a vertex at L, so that's gonna be in the middle. So angle KLJ, KLJ. That would, again, L is still in the middle. Same thing as JLK, angle JLK. And then we have our smiley face angle. Our smiley face angle is going to be angle um, KLM, with the L in the middle, or you could do angle MLK. So those are the three different angles coming out of vertex L. So then it wants to know our MLK. So MLK, that is going to be my um, smiley face angle. And MLJ, M to L to J. So I'm going to trace that. Watch this. M to L to J. That's my star angle. That's how I'm doing that. Are those adjacent to each other? Meaning, are they next to each other? Do they share a vertex and a ray? Well, they do share a vertex. The vertex is at point L. But this angle, the star angle, MLJ, is not adjacent to the smiley face angle, MLK, because those don't share a ray meaning that ray LJ is not in both of those. And so the answer to that question would be no, because they do not share a ray. Now the star angle and the heart angle would be adjacent to each other. All right, name all the angles in the image below. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna have our star angle. I like to put symbols just so you'll know what I'm talking about as I name them. Our heart angle and our smiley face angle. All of these angles are coming out of point G. So name all the angles. We have angle EGD. I could also go DGE, making sure that the G is in the middle. There's my star angle. My heart angle is angle DGF. Also could be done as FGD. That's my heart angle. And then my smiley face angle is angle EGF. G is still in the middle. That's my vertex. Um, could also be FGE, meaning the same thing. All right, our EGD so EGD is my star angle, 
is that one adjacent to FGD, which is my heart angle? Do they, um, are they next door neighbors where they share a vertex and a side? So let's check. The vertex is G in both. The ray that they share in both is G through D. So are they adjacent? The answer to this one would be yes. Those are adjacent to each other by definition. All right, so let's think back to angle classification. Um, angle classification, you're either going to be acute, right, obtuse, or straight. So we're going to give ourselves an example, a picture, and on, on each of these, we remember that an acute angle is going to be an angle that measures um, greater than zero degrees, but less than 90. So this would be an example of an acute angle. So anything more than zero, but less than 90. If it's a right angle, then it's going to be angle A. So there's this A. Angle A would be equal to 90 degrees. We indicate that with a box, so 90 degree angle. An obtuse angle is going to measure more than 90 degrees. So there's my rays, there's A, more than 90. And then a straight angle is going to measure exactly, there's point A, exactly 180 degrees, which is half of a circle. So the measure of angle A is equal to 180 degrees. And so we're gonna use the protractor and we're gonna use the picture of the protractor in order to find and measure different angles and then to classify them. So let's find AOD, let's highlight that first. Measure of angle AOD, so we start at A, go to vertex at O, and then go to D. So I'm trying to find the measure of this angle. We already know that that's going to be obtuse because that measures more than 90 degrees but less than 180 degrees. So what we're trying to do is to measure this angle. So if I'm starting at AOD, I wanna start at zero because we know that this side starts at zero and measure all the way around the inside number since I started at zero to see where that goes to. That happens in between 160 degrees and 170 degrees, which we know is 165 degrees. And by definition, 165 is more than 90 and less than 180, so that is going to be an obtuse angle. I'm going to erase this every time just for the purposes of being able to see a little bit better. Now let's find the measure of angle BOA. So starting at B, going to vertex O, and then tracing out to A. We already know that that should be acute just by looking at it. If we weren't sure, we'd go ahead and measure it first and then be able to tell. BOA, so we're going in to measure this. Again, we're gonna start at zero on the right-hand side, so we're gonna use the inside numbers. This opens up to 40 degrees, and by definition, 40 degrees is going to be an acute amount because it is more than um, zero degrees, but less than 90. Let's change colors again. Okay, let's change to blue. We, now we wanna find the measure of DOB. So starting at D, going to the vertex at O, and then going to B. Now this one's tricky because we're not starting at zero on this one. So this is similar to what we did the other day when we were finding the measure of segments, DOB. It doesn't matter if you work with the inside numbers or the outside numbers, the difference of those is still gonna be the same. So I'm gonna work with the um, inside numbers because I like to start on the right. I'm going from 40 all the way opening up to 165. So from 40 to 165. So the math I'm gonna do is I'm gonna subtract 165, I'm gonna subtract 40, okay? And so that's gonna give me the measure of 125 degrees. Now what if I had gone the other way? That would be, um, that would have started at, let's see, 15 would be the outside number, and then 140 would be the outside number, so 15 and 140. If you do 140 minus 15, you are still gonna get 125 degrees. So either way, whether you'd use the inside numbers or the outside numbers, you're still gonna get 125, which we know is an obtuse amount. Um, and that was just a little bit harder because they didn't start on zero. So you'd find the difference and it's the absolute value of that difference. I always just do the big number minus the small number. All right, now let's switch. Let's do that one more time and let's go find the measure of angle AOE. So AOE. AOE, if I were to trace that, starting at A, going to vertex at O, going all the way across, that is going to be a straight line. And so when we do that, what is the measure of a straight line? It is going to be 180 degrees. That is going to be a straight line because it's equal to 180. If you weren't sure how to do that mathematically, that goes from zero to 180 on the inside, so the difference is 180, or 180 to zero on the outside, so the difference is still 180. All right, so now we're gonna look at congruent angles. So yesterday we had congruent segments. 
Today, we're going to look at congruent angles. So if you have these little marks for congruent angles, if you know that the measures of the angles are equal, then the angles are going to be congruent to each other. So if you know that the measure of angle B, in our picture, that's the vertex, if that is the same as the measure of angle E, if that's equal to the measure of angle E, then those angles are going to be congruent to each other. So now, since those are marked the same, I'd be able to say that angle B is congruent to angle E. So the angles themselves are congruent. They're not equal to, they're not the same angle because those are obviously two different pictures. We have angle E is in pink, angle B is in blue, but if I were to line those up and put them on top of each other, those measures would be equal. So numerically, their measures are the same. The angles themselves, it's written as they are congruent to each other. And like we use tick marks for saying that a segments were congruent, we're going to use arc marks. And so I, I always think of the C and arc to remember that. An arc mark looks like this. It kind of looks like the, an eyelid. And so that arc is going to be marked as congruent. So this arc has one arc. Uh, this angle has one arc. And so those are marked as congruent to each other, which means that their measures would be equal. So let me give you an example. If we know that those are congruent, I might say, so if this one is, let's just see, this is acute, so maybe this is like 30 degrees. If that's 30 degrees, that would imply that this one is 30 degrees as well because their measures are the same. All right. Okay, let's look at this. What is an angle bisector? An angle bisector is going to be a ray that divides an angle into two congruent angles. So just like we did the other day, that symbol means congruent, two congruent angles. So we have this big angle. That bigger angle is ABC. We have a ray coming out of it. This ray is BD. That ray is cutting that angle in half. How do I know that? Because the measures are the same. 40 and 40 are the same, which means that this angle must be congruent to this angle. So I'm going to mark them with two arcs and two arcs since I've already used one in the example above. So that ray, ray BD, ray BD, that red one, color code that. Ray BD is an angle bisector of the blue angle, angle ABC. Therefore, here's what we know. We know that that must mean that the if that's an angle bisector, those angles are going to be congruent. So I know that angle ABD is congruent to angle CBD, which also means that since that is the angle bisector, their measures are equal. So I could set, I know that the measure of angle ABD should be equal, the same numerical value as the measure of angle CBD. Okay, notice that B is the vertex in the middle on both of those. I could have reversed ABD to DBA. I could have reversed CBD to DBC, but just B has to be in the middle, okay? Sorry, guys, that's a dog barking. Um, use the diagram below to complete each statement. So we're just looking for congruence marks. So who is marked the same as A, D, E? So let's go find that in the diagram. This is kind of scary. This is a lot going on. A to D to E. A, D, E goes from here to here to here. So I'm looking for the one with two. Who's the same as A, D, E? I'm going to do that is going to be C, D, B. So both of those have two. C, D, B. Angle C, D, B. Those are going to be congruent to each other. A to D to B and C to D to B. Both of those have a vertex at D. All right, who is going to be congruent to D, E, A? So this is a complicated picture. D, E, A. So D, E, A is this one right here. Starts at, um, let me make sure that's right. D to E to A has one mark. Where do you see one mark? Right here at M to B to W. M to B to W, so angle M, B, W. So if we know that angle W, B, M, W, B, M right here is 50, what does that mean about the one that also has one mark? It also has to be 50 degrees because if the angles are congruent, that means that their measures are going to be equal to each other. All right, yesterday we had something called the angle addition postulate. Today we have something called the, uh, or the, sorry, yesterday we had the segment addition postulate. Today we have the angle addition postulate. So I'm going to do this in colors. If we know the yellow angle and we know the red angle, together the yellow and the red angle are going to make up this big angle in blue, which is ABC. So let's do that in colors. We know that the measure of angle ABD, whatever that number is, added to, I'm going to do some pink, 
the measure of angle DBC, when you add those together, that should be equal to the big blue angle. So that should have a sum of the measure of angle ABC. Okay, so yellow plus red equals blue in colors. Um, or if you didn't to color code it a little bit better, yellow plus pink equals blue. Okay, so the smaller parts add up to the whole. So let's do that in a few examples. If we know that the measure of angle ABD, so let's trace that. Let's go ahead and do that in yellow. ABD is equal to 48. So ABD, that's this yellow one right here. So if we know that that's equal to 48 degrees, okay, so there's the yellow part. And we know that the measure of angle DBC, I'll do that in pink, is equal to 78 DBC. That angle is equal to 78 degrees. What do I do to find the measure of ABC, which is that whole thing? It's that big blue angle. I'm gonna to add together my smaller parts. So I'm gonna do 48, and I'm gonna add the other part, which is 78 degrees. And so when you do 48 plus 78, you're gonna get 126 degrees. And we always wanna check ourselves before we wreck ourselves. Does this angle, the whole thing, the blue one, look like a 126 degree angle? Yes, because it's obtuse. And so that is a good answer. 126 degrees does make sense as an answer. All right, and so if it said classify the angle, you'd say obtuse. So let's do this again. They say, what if DBC, this pink part, DBC is 74 degrees, so we know that this part is 74. And then we know that the measure of angle ABC, the big one, I'm gonna do that in blue, the big one in blue, the overall angle, is equal to 119 degrees. So that big one all the way across is equal to 119 degrees on the outside then what is this little small yellow angle, the measure of angle ABD? What's left? And so the angle addition postulate allows us to take the full amount and subtract off what I've spent. So we're gonna do 119, and we're gonna subtract off the 74. That is going to give me 45 degrees left, 45 degrees left for this angle. What would you classify that as, as if, I, if I ask you to? That would be an acute angle, because it measures less than 90 degrees. All right, so how do we find on the next problem the measure of angle PQS? Oh, that's, I'm gonna do that in yellow. I'm just gonna keep going color coding. PQS, how do I find the smaller angle if PQR, the big one, the blue one, PQR, the overall big amount, is equal to 141. So we know that that makes sense when I put that in my picture because that is obtuse, 141 degrees. Okay, and um, so that's the blue one. And then um, we wanna find PQS. So we wanna find the yellow one. Find the yellow one. If the blue one is 141, and then RQS, R to Q to S, so starting at R, going to Q, going to S, if we know that that one is 55 degrees. So if the big amount is 141, I can just subtract off what I've spent for the pink angle, and that's gonna give me the yellow angle. So what is 141 minus 55? That is going to give me 86 degrees. 86 degrees total. If I ask you to uh, um, classify that as acute, right, obtuse, or straight, you would say that that is an acute angle because it's less than 90 degrees. All right, the next part says that um, it's got a uh, description, but it doesn't have a diagram. So if in doubt, we're always gonna dry, draw it out. We have an angle, RSU, so let's draw that. I don't know what it is. Um, I don't know if it's acute, obtuse, right, or straight. I think this ends up being obtuse based on the numbers, but let's look at it real quick. Um, R, S, U, so R, S is the vertex, U is the angle. We can adjust our picture if needed, but this is just a sketch. And then T is somewhere on the interior, meaning that T is happening somewhere inside. I don't know where, but we'll just put a T here. There's a ray, and we want to find the measure of R, S, T, which is going to be this yellow part, R to S to T. Find that yellow part if T, S, U, T, S, U is 47. So let's fill that in. That would be 47 degrees is what that's given. And then RSU is 85. So I might wanna make this a little bit smaller because it's closer to a right angle than what I've drawn. But again, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is just a quick sketch, so RSU. And so this piece is 85 degrees. So overall, that blue part is 85 degrees. So the blue part is 85 degrees, that whole thing. And then um, the 47 is what has been spent. So we're looking for the yellow piece. What is left for RST, the measure of RST? Well, if the full amount is 85, I can do 85 
minus the 47 that I've already spent. So what is 85 minus 47? 85 minus 47 is going to give me a 38 degree angle. And we know if I needed to classify that, that would be an acute angle. And in my picture, that does look acute for the yellow part. Obviously, it's not drawn to scale, so you didn't have to fix that picture. All right, and then it tells me that we've got a bisect. Remember, bisect means to cut into two equal pieces. And so if I've got a bisector, this KM bisector, this ray, is cutting this blue angle in half. And it tells me that the measure of angle MKL is 30. So MKL, that's the star angle right here. If that is 30 degrees, we know that by bisect, that means that this side at this angle should be congruent to this angle. So we want to find the other angles. So if it bisects it, that means that this angle, this star angle, should also be 30 degrees. So JKM is going to be 30 degrees. And then what is the whole thing? The two stars added together. That makes the blue amount. So 30 plus 30 is 60 degrees. So JKM would be acute. LKJ would be acute as well. Um, but that angle was the, that ray was the angle bisector. So that ray cut that um, angle in half. And so each side um, of the, uh, each angle on each side of the ray were going to be congruent to each other. So their measures were equal. So we have our homework assignment is going to be 1.5. This is all about measuring angles and classifying them. And these are our notes. I hope you're having a great day.